Welcome to the Dog Storytime Podcast. If you'd like to hear the amazing stories of the dogs in our lives, this is the show for you. From the heartwarming to the head tilting, we share the stories of dog owners and their furry family members. And now your host, luxury fine art pet photographer and puppy whisperer, Kimberly Sarah Bucari. Welcome, everyone. This is Kimberly Sarah Bucari, and we are here with Dog Storytime Podcast. Today's guest is a very special guest to us and a very good friend, Sue Travers. In her day job, Sue works in the technology sector, but the truth is, her full time gig is being a wonderful dog mom to three amazing pups and a human mom to two amazing humans. That would be Emma and Cam. We love them all so much. Today you will hear her talk about her Belgian Malinois, Huey. Here we go. Sue, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I want to tell people about you, one of your dogs. Now, I know you have quite a few, but one of your dogs is Fiona. She's a little Frenchy. She is my muse. She has been on some of the best Christmas cards we have ever created at Kimberly Sour Photography. <laughs> and uh, she's my go-to dog. But she's not the one we're going to talk about today. Who are we going to talk about, Sue? No, so today we're going to talk about Huey. Wonderful. Yes, he is my newest um, member of the pack. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a one and a half year old Belgian Malinois. Handsome, handsome dog. He is. He is. I have met Huey. He's been wonderful. (laughs) After a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly, right? So this is a high energy dog, as most people know. Yes, very smart, very high energy Mm -hmm. working dog. Mm -hmm. And so what is it that you do? do with him to keep him happy? So a lot of training and a lot of exercise and a lot of mental exercises as well. So he was actually um, bred in Massachusetts Mm -hmm. and he was being raised by my trainer, um, Rebecca from Peace of Mind Canine in Concord. She um, was raising him to be a police dog along with a um, police canine handler. They were both um, teaming up to raise him Mm -hmm. and he was supposed to be a police dog. But in part of their training, they realized that he just was overall a little too friendly. Um, They thought that, you know, if he was going after a bad guy and the bad guy said, get away, he'd say, okay, sorry. So he would lick them to death. He would kiss them to death. He is quite a ladies man. In fact, um, (laughs) the breeder had named him Albert. But when they met him and worked with him a little bit, they said he was a ladies' man, and uh-huh. they changed his name to Huey after Hugh Hefner. Excellent. So, I love that. <laughs> that's where he got his name from. He's a lover, not a fighter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So when you say you do a lot of training with him, what is it exactly that you do? So when I got him, he was about six months old Mm -hmm. and he had had the basic obedience so he could sit and lay down. Um, But he, because he is a a full working dog breed, he really has, um, my whole life now is basically been changed to be around his training. Sure. So I um, moved my house because I was in a townhouse at the time with no fenced in backyard Mm -hmm. and he needs to run. I also went from driving, um, you know, a fancy Audi SUV to a full-size pickup truck. And and why is that? To accommodate um, him in what way? Yeah, so I have two crates. I actually never crated. Uh-huh. I never had dogs in crates in the car before. They sure. just always rode in the back. That's what... That's where you put them or, you know, never in my lap. I was never that bad, but they would be in the front and Fiona has ridden in the front and still does. Um, But with him, I realized, you know, he needs a crate in the back. I couldn't, especially when he's younger and even now, um, didn't trust him to be alone in the back of a car without, if he gets bored, he could be destructive. Sure. Sure. So, um, so I had crate for him. He's crate trained and he also rides in a crate, which I hadn't thought about it until somebody was talking about the best crash test for dog crates, Yes. but they are actually so much safer in a car, in a crate. Yes. And I think for some dogs, it helps them settle Mm -hmm. as well, right? So this is, it's not a punishment for them. No. This kind of becomes where 
it's their space. They own it. Yep. They they settle in and they're usually fine. Exactly. I, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he, um, when we go out, I open the back of the truck. I open his crate. He jumps right in, lays down, and he's ready to go. Great. Um, also, a lot of the training that we do or the events that we go to, they're all day events. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the summer, in the spring, so he is hanging out in the back of the you know the truck or in the crate a, a good portion of the day. Right. While we're waiting for events or things like that. So. Right. Um, we, we've tried almost every sport so far. We we do um, we tried agility. He loved that. I would think so. Yeah, yeah, he he did. He did so great. He was so athletic. And but again, agility you need obedience. It all stems from obedience. Right. Um, he also does nose work. So that is where they um, it mimics how police dogs look for drugs or bombs. Sure. They look for essential oils. So his three um, scents currently are birch, anise, and clove. Okay. And there is a whole um, nose work sport where people compete in different levels of scent finding. Yes. Um, it's, yes. It's a great, it's so much fun. In fact, um, the first one that I went to, there were two French bulldogs. Um, most of the dogs doing those nose work classes were not working dogs. They were just, just your, Frenchies and yeah, you know, your, your some border pet, call. Yeah, so to exactly. speak. Not yes. the, yeah. Oh, it interesting. Was, so he's really opened me up to the dog sport world. Um, right. Because I didn't know all the things out there. He also, you know, there's dock diving. Mm-hmm. We have a, a little place on a lake and he's been learning to to jump off the dock and, and swim. He loves to swim. Good. Um, and now we're comp- we're training to compete in Mondio Ring, which okay. is a protection sport. Oh, okay. So it involves not only um, obedience and training to, you know, strict obedience where um, he has to be sitting and I go out of sight for five minutes Oh wow! and he has to not move. Sure. And then it's also, um, there's bite work involved in that. So mm-hmm. they learn to bite a decoy on demand, you know, on command, yeah, right. I should say. And um, part of the training is that as well. So we do protect, pr- protection training mm-hmm. every Sunday. Um, and he go, he's starting, the one thing, the funny thing about Huey is he doesn't bark. In, in oh, protection training, um, that you know, you you'll tell the dog to watch him or guard right, or whatever, and they right. go up and they bark at the person. He mm-hmm. doesn't bark. Oh no, kidding! So yeah, when he's out back and he's playing with his ball, right, he'll bark. Okay, but otherwise he he he's, doesn't make a sound. So, so. he's all business. Yep. I mean, so he's we're just <laughs> very high prey he's, drive. He's not going to give yeah. you any chance. He's just going to yeah. go right to it. Not no yeah. no alarms first. He's yeah. just going <laughs> to. So we're working on getting him to bark because right. for the upper levels he will need to. You would have to. Yeah, it's really great. But he has he has. Um, I've had dogs my whole life. I have two mm-hmm. other dogs, Fiona, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, and I have a 13 year old yellow lab mix. Yes. I rescued Hazel. She's beautiful. Um, but this dog and, and his training and training for the sports and accommodating him has thoroughly changed my life. I went from shopping at Nordstrom's for, you know, Burberry and Louis Vuitton to being really excited about a sale on Carhartt at Agway. Okay. Um. <laughs> All right. Wait a second. So <laughs> let's get that straight. Yeah. So you have changed your lifestyle even in in the way that through your purchases even in the way that you dress yes yeah and it's because of it's because of Huey yep 100% so you, yeah that's so interesting yeah that's I, so interesting I was involved in you know you know you grow up and you want all the fancy things and hair done sure. all the time makeup done all the time right always had to have the brand name everything for me right the clothes mm-hmm. I wore the purse I carried the kind of car I drove Um, And then I got into this working dog world um, and nobody cares about what I look like. I could roll in in my pajamas, but they will see what my dog is wearing. I will wear (laughs) five, you know, (laughs) jeans I've had for 10 years with rips in them. Right. Um, But Huey will have a... $90 $90 embroidered collar sure. with his name on it. And so, um, where you, so your values have somewhat shifted yes. to Huey having the best 
Yes, um, making sure he's he safe happen. and you know. Yeah, and, right, right. You've got you've got the car or the mm-hmm. truck that's going to keep him safe. Yep. You've got the best of the crate that's going to keep him safe. Yeah. And so whatever equipment and training he needs to yep. keep him happy. Exactly. I mean, yeah, that's a whole different way of yep. what you win. I yeah. now work so that my dog can be happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate to that though. Yeah. Um, you know, you do, I guess, at some point in your life, realize what is valuable yes, to you. Like, exactly. where, do you, where are your values? And yeah. it usually, you know, for us dog lovers, it's the dog. It's It's, true. it's a relationship. And it's making them happy. Yes. And yeah. he's helped me so much just emotionally. I, um, I went through a really hard time in my life. Mm-hmm. And um, I work from home full time. Right. So if it wasn't for having to get up and take him to day school or get up and go to take him to training, yes. I would never leave the house. Yes. And you could definitely, working from home sounds like such a great thing to most people, but you can definitely get into you know a funk. And, yeah, um, it can feel like a depression too, is, because yeah. then you have, I think you go from, okay, I don't have to get dressed, mm-hmm. right? There's all this kind of mental exercises that you do to yes. say, I don't have to get dressed and I don't have to go out and I don't have to brush my teeth. Mm-hmm. And not, you know what I mean? So it becomes right. yep. this kind of this cocoon yep. where you don't have to really escape. It's true. But you, it can get you, yeah, like you said, yep. in a funk. At lunchtime, you think, did I brush my teeth today? Right. Because you know you didn't shower. <laughs> yeah, right. But um, that might come later. But yeah, but because of the dog and yes. the people that I've met um, at the dog training place, you know, they're great people. They all have the same. The dog is what matters. I right. I do photography as a hobby too, as you yes. know, and I was doing um, photography for um, a fitness format that was all about the people and what they looked like and what uh. they wore. They went to this fitness class and full hair and makeup, wearing mm-hmm. the brand clothes. And when I took pictures, I was always so worried about making sure the person was in it and I got enough pictures of this person. And now I go to the dog world and they just, <laughs> they don't care. As long as they you, don't want to be in the picture, from, the humans nope. don't care. No, it's all about the dog. <laughs> right. Everything is focused on the dog and, right. and I just love it because yes. that's And you have some beautiful style. work out there. You've been published oh, a few you. times in some um, working dog yeah, magazine. Yeah, I take pictures for the uh, um, the Manchester Police Canine Unit. Yes. So um, yes. I work with them on a lot of, you know, helping their association for um, the retired police dogs. Wonderful. So, yes. Wonderful. You've had a couple come through here through the studio yes. and they have been such loves. Yeah, they um, really are. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them, it's, um, you're not going to snuggle, right. but um, they all have their own story. And yes. um, But some of them, especially a couple that have come in here, the right. retired ones are just, right. they're big loves. Yeah. Yes. We even and had we, um, and, a father and son come in here once. Well, it was a Manchester police, um, the father was a retired Manchester police canine, mm-hmm. and now his, his uh, son is a current canine Fantastic. Um, on the unit, yes. Fantastic. And speaking of cuddling, mm-hmm. how is Huey? Does he fit right into the family with the other dogs? I mean, he do you does. spend a Sunday on the couch in front of the TV, and is he is he curled up next to you? Is that the type of dog he is? He is, which is not typical for his breed. Right. Um, they are a lot of work. I, when I take yes. them out, people, you know, say, oh, I want one of them. And I'm like, really? Unless you're going to move your house, change mm-hmm. your truck, not dress the way you used to dress. I mean, it's... And put all your time, put all, all your, your time extra and time money into the dog. Into the dog. Yes. Um, but yes, he is, he lives in the house. Uh, he's not, you know, in a kennel out back. Right. He does sleep in a crate. Yep. Um, he is in a crate if we are not home. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I work from home, so he will hang out with my other dogs. But th- one of the things, too, is most most of us want our dogs with us all the time. We love right. that when we get up, they follow us. But I've learned through my trainer that that's actually not healthy for the dogs. They feel like they need to be responsible for us. Yes. And that's why they follow us everywhere. Right. Um, so I actually, and it, this is hard on, as hard on me as it is for him, have to dismiss him um, when I'm there. So he needs to be comfortable to go lay on his cot or lay Mm -hmm. in a bed, Mm -hmm. not necessarily his crate. We start with the crate, Um, but I need to put him in the living room on his bed, tell him go to bed and make him stay there. And that's where the training and the obedience comes in Right. um, while I go work in my office. And so that 
reasoning behind that is so he doesn't stay constantly on high alert mm-hmm. so he can kind so of he can relax ha- yep. himself like he's off duty kind exactly. of thing yep be independent and be comfortable with being away from mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. um we've all seen that dog that when they're the their separation owner, anxiety yep, right it's that, it's yeah awful for and some it's, dogs it's yeah ha- it's actually hard because i'm home i you know you want, you want it, them right. with That's me all why the time we have dogs yes. right we want them with us but it's but actually better doing... for them if they learn to be independent mm-hmm. and it's okay if he's in a room on a cot while i'm in another room doing right. something else he doesn't have to be right next to me right all the next, time yeah i get um, it and i never oh, interesting. realized that no, until I, my, guess, yeah. I know i bet you a lot of people haven't yeah my trainer in there's so much in the training that I've learned. I mean, when I first started going to, to my trainer, she they had us you know learn something called touch, where they put a, an object, a little square foam pad mm-hmm. on the floor, and the dog had to put two paws on the pad. And then you move to a command called place, where they have to put all four paws on the pad. Okay. And, um, you know, she, my, my trainer explains the concept so well, it really makes sense, but um, it all builds upon each other. So, you know, when you go somewhere, or if, you, if I'm doing pictures and I want him to put his front, two front paws up on something right. to get a photo, I can tell him to touch. Right. I did learn the hard way. Uh, he had a little trouble between touch and place. Okay. So touch is two paws, for, um, place is all four. Mm-hmm. So we were at the Apple Store, the yep. Apple Store in the mall has an external entrance, so you can go in there with the dog. Right. Um, and, you know, they have those thin tables where they display all the phones. They're yes. probably about four, six inches wide. I thought it'd be funny when the new iPhone came out to get a picture of Huey with his front paws up on that little ledge with uh-huh. the new iPhone. So right. I told him to touch, but he was he, thinking place, and so he all he's them? so athletic, he almost can vertically jump. Oh my jump. goodness. He jumped right up on that little ledge <laughs> with all the iPhones and, <laughs> and made quite an impression at the Apple store. I bet um, he did. <laughs> yep. And he did the same thing at um, Lowe's. Okay. Uh, when you're in Lowe's around football season, they have the little Patriots, you know, Know, tailgate section where they have the easy up and the little tiny grill and all right. the, the display. So my trainer um, has a class and she takes the dogs out and about for uh, training in you know different settings. Places and like so, that, yeah, yeah, sure. So they mm-hmm. went to Lowe's and um, she somebody told Huey to place on the grill. And, you know, it was the little tiny square ones, the charcoal one. Right. And he just leaped and jumped right up on top oh of the grill. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so. my goodness. So sometimes you need to be careful mm-hmm. training your dog so well. Yes. That he, or <laughs> that making he, sure right, he understands right. the difference between two similar commands. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's... I always wanted a well-trained dog. Yes. And I thought I knew what needed to be done, but I just never put the time and energy into it. Right. And I think people think I'm going to get a puppy and I'm going to go to puppy class and then we'll be trained and it'll be all good. And I had a friend ask me, you know, she's like, oh, you do a lot of training. When are you going to be done? And I'm like, I'll never be There's done. There's never a done. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, and I think you'll hear that from any, tr- any trainer that's worth working mm-hmm. with is that it's a constant thing. Thing. It doesn't, you don't just, the dog doesn't just learn one behavior and then it's over. Yeah. I mean, dogs, most dogs like to work, mm-hmm. you know, and they want to make you happy by asking you, asking them what to do. Yes. And it's, um, and it's yeah, it should be never ending. Right. And it's this also, is a relationship building. Exactly. Type of thing. And it's us learning how to communicate to them. So yes. one of the things that my trainer did in a class, um, it's called Focus Fido. So it's mm-hmm. having the dog focus on us, mm-hmm. learning engagement and all those kind of things. But the first class, she had a table and she had, I don't know, 20, 30 objects on the table. And she had me, I was the first volunteer, I guess, and I went into the back room and I couldn't hear anything that she said. And so she was telling the other class the, the goal of the class, of the, what we were doing. So I came out and I, the, nobody could talk. Okay. And so there was a bunch of things on the table, so I just started touching them. And when I would touch the right one, she would give me a click. Oh. And then... When I started putting them together, 
when I finally got what she wanted, what, which yeah. ended up there were three things and one needed to go on top of the other, on top of the other. And then I got a double click, which meant it, the okay, exercise so was over. Mm-hmm. And she was trying, and it was a great exercise to show us this is how our dogs learn. Right. They, they start don't from understand. nothing. They have no right. reference. Mm-hmm. It is right. Exactly. So yeah. simple. Uh, we were at a class today. I was um, taking some pictures of her puppy class. Mm-hmm. And I she was explaining to somebody, you know, you have food in both hands and you're trying to get them to look at you. She was teaching a look. So you get the dog to look at you and you have to mark it and say yes when they're correct. Well, there was somebody that was doing it, but they weren't saying yes until they were already moving the food towards the dog. Ah. And, you know, it's not until she says these things, I don't see it, but then right. she says, you know, what's, this, what's the dog getting the reward for? Or what, what are they looking? They're following now your hand. They think that's what they're that's, getting yes. the reward for. When yes. the, it should be them looking in your eyes. It so. is, yeah. It's a wonderful thing to work with a trainer, too, because I think you, you do. You get a lot more insight mm-hmm. into how a dog thinks. Exactly. Right? And and it's those little, little little things um I have a friend who is a trainer and she said just by shifting her shoulders she could tell the dog what direction to walk yeah. in mm-hmm. I mean it's just those little things yeah they are constantly watching us for they our are. cues and, and we don't and realize so it, intelligent yeah. yeah if you think about it you're sitting in your living room you know you're having a lazy Sunday and all day you're sitting and you get up and you go to the kitchen or you get up but if you notice your dog will know when you're getting up to go to bed yes they act differently it's just the way yes. for somehow the way we get out of the chair right. or the way we all right let's go yep, you know they exactly. know the difference yep. and yep, and they're, it they're is. just so it's very attuned. interesting yeah it's, it's very interesting working with a trainer that that also you know that that treats each individual dog as an individual yes it's not every dog's going to learn to sit like this my trainer also works with a lot of reactive dogs or dogs that have issues Mm -hmm. so you might go to a focused vital class and there could be two dogs in in different corners of the room and they're just sitting there and it's because they need to be you know they're um calmed or handled because they're not used to being and they're not good around other dogs and so They'll be in a cot on the in the corner with their handler, and their handler is then rewarding them when they are calm when a dog walks by, or right. simple things like that. Right. Um, right. I think people, so many people have reactive dogs, or my dog doesn't like other dogs, or my dog doesn't like men, or my dog doesn't like kids, and mm-hmm. um, something happened to make that dog. There's a reason. Yeah, There's and, a and reason. you can also yeah. fix it right. if you you know have somebody that understands why and which I think is very important because we do especially in the New England area um well maybe everywhere but we have dogs that come to this area of uh, rescue dogs mm-hmm. as well and we don't know what their background exactly. is and you really need if you're going to take a dog into your life um you do need to do the right thing by that dog and training is usually a part of it exactly it's and it. it's so that they can also understand what yes. we're trying to yes. get from them yes and rescue dogs or my dog hazel's a rescue dog right she came from the south right um and definitely you know we like to humanize them and yes. make we have oh you know i'm sure she must have been abused or she must have been this the thing dogs don't they're over it kind of a few minutes right. later um right. Unless you know they can't have one incident that causes them stress and they mm-hmm. and it affects them for years to come, but right. a good trainer can help you see what that is and work yes, through and it. work with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Sue, so let's recap. Okay, so <laughs> Huey comes into your life. Yes, he has changed your life. Yes, in so many great ways, mm-hmm. and it's because you've done the right thing by him. What would you tell people who? Because the Belgian Malinois has become quite popular recently, what would you tell people about the breed that they might not know? Um, So they are extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. Um, They are very high energy and they need a job and it needs to be a consistent job. They need to work and need an extensive amount of training. Um, They can be a family dog. But I'd say that's the exception to the rule. Most of them are good at, you know, the military uses them. Um, A lot of police departments use them. Right. Um, Sports, dog sport people um, have them. But again, it's people who dedicate their lives to the training and upkeep of this kind of dog. Yes. Um, 
German Shepherds are similar, so they're you know right. a lot of people call them the the high energy German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people see Huey and they don't know. They think he. They ask if he's a shepherd mix because right. he looks a little bit like a shepherd. Um, I have one of my closest friends rescued a shepherd from you know one of the local rec rescue organizations, and she is the most opposite of of Huey. She's chill and relaxed, <laughs> and you know. And then I know a lot of German shepherds that are high yes. intensity. So not yes. they're not all going to be the same. Um, I would say you need to really do research if you're gonna mm -hmm. if you're interested in getting a mm -hmm. Malinois and uh, really read up about them and make sure that you're prepared for what you're getting yourself into. I um, I never thought I would have one, truthfully. Right. I, as I mentioned, do pictures for uh, the canine unit. And so I've seen their Malinois and then I said, I could never have one of these. And my trainer, um, I was going away. She was watching my Frenchie. Um, the people I was going to, was going to see had um, just had shepherd puppies and I said to my I said to my trainer it's a good thing they're only four weeks old and they can't fly or they I'm sure I'd be coming home with one and she said well we have Huey and I'm like who you know who's, who's Huey and I went out and saw him and then my the entire time I was away I was thinking okay how can how can I make this work can oh I do goodness. I was terrified yeah um and we made it work but because I have rearranged my entire life right. to make it so that it can work. Yes. Um, it's dedication. Mm -hmm. It's dedication. Yeah. And it's a lot of time and a lot of money. I mean, he goes to day school full time, two days a week. We do, as I mentioned, nose work training, agility training. Um, he takes focus phyto class. He just, we went today to, um, a, he did a therapy dog class and we're in the last two classes. We went to visit a nursing oh, home. Wonderful. Which I was very nervous about. Yeah, I, sure. Because he's high energy and he likes to jump. Um, he did really great, good. but, um, yeah, good. it was, it was a little, I was nervous, good. but he did good. <laughs> um, and then we do the protection training, which is a lot, but it's, it's every day, at least 10 minutes. If it's not an actual training class day, yes. we have to do some sort of obedience or some sort of training. Okay. So um, some kind of small, yeah, it could be 10 minutes session or, that, yep, yeah, that he, he, when I feed he him, uses that brain. Yep. He may sure. have to, you know, I'll put his food down in front of him when the other dogs are eating and he'll have to leave it until I tell him it's okay. Or or, you know, he'll have to sit and then down and then stand and then he can eat or just little things. But we try and get at least 10 minutes every single day of some sort of training. Sue, thank you for sharing your story of Huey with us. And as we ask most people, what is your snout out today? So my snout out is the Manchester, as I mentioned, I do pictures for the Canine Association and um, the Manchester Association of Police Canines. It is an association created by the current sergeant that leads the canine unit and it supports the canines once they retire. When they are active, uh, the city pays for their full care, vet care, food, but as soon as they retire, the officers buy them from the city for a dollar and then are responsible for all of their care. Oh, wow. And these dogs have a lot of, you know, injuries that they yes. have over the course of their service. And so this association helps with that and also any um, burial costs after they pass. Right. So, um, yes, that That's is That's a wonderful my... organization, Sue. Thank you. I would think that... Um, they would be easy enough to find online, but do you know of a website or a way yes. to contact them? Yes, it is um, MAP Canine, so M A P Canine 603.org. Excellent, and it's a website. great way to support those dogs that have been in service yes. for years. Correct, yeah, and Thank then their you, retirement sir. and their well deserved um, years of rest after exactly. working so hard. Exactly. So we're going to wrap it up here, Sue. Thank you so much for talking about Huey. We know him firsthand. We absolutely love him. He is a very handsome boy. But for those of you listening, thinking about getting a Belgian Malinois, do listen to Sue's story. He's quite a handful, a lot of energy, um, but we do love him. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Dog Storytime Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a minute to leave a review. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss all the exciting episodes we have coming up soon. If you want to learn more about our podcast and Kimberly's work with dogs, head over to KimberlySarahPhotography.com. Thank you for listening.